organ. Although it has a mass of about 2% of a person's body weight, it consumes about 29% of all their energy. All probably because the brain was constantly ready to act. The brain is considered an energy efficient organ says the author of the work, Professor Timothy Ryan, biochemist from Weill Cornell Medicine New York. Previously, scientists assumed that such a large collection is related to the fact electrical activity in the brain. Constant firing of electrical signals the cells lead to the use of a huge amount of energy stored in particles called adenosine 5-triphosphate ADP. However, research conducted over the past decades has indicated an unexplained gap in this theory. It turns out that the brains of people in the state vegetative or coma that exhibit very little activity electric, they still use a lot of energy. So the neuroscientists stood before the question, if the electrical activity does not consume all the energy in the brain, what's that taking it? In new research, the researchers found that tiny structures in our brains called synaptic vesicles that they store and they transport neurotransmitters, they can constantly draw energy. This is happening whether they are needed or not. Perhaps one such the situation makes the brain constantly ready to act. The study was published in the journal Science Advances. In recent years, Ryan and his team have investigated connections in a brain called synapses. Thanks to them, the neurons meet and communicate, releasing tiny vesicles filled with chemicals called the neurotransmitters. Previously, scientists have shown that active synapses consume a lot of energy. In the new study, Neurons were neutralized with the help toxins and then measured ADP levels inside the synapses. It turned out that connections between neurons still consume a lot of energy. Researchers decided to check why this is happening and they looked at synaptic bubbles closer. It turned out that different particles energy responsible for transporting energy to and from the sun of a sun worked all the clock even despite the deactivation of the neurons and the resin of the synapses themselves. In other words, energy leaves from the bubbles responsible for transporting chemicals even in inactive synapses. Scientists say the so-called cure is due to the so-called transport proteins that take up neurotransmitter, change shape, and recarry it inside the bubble. This is due to the difference in concentration substances inside the protein. Energy is needed to perform this task, and this process is happening constantly, regardless of whether neurons remain active or not. We found some kind of inefficiency in neurons, Ryan explains. Leakage may seem small, but if we collect trillions leaks together, it ends with a fairly large energy expense, even without electrical activity, he adds. The research was carried out using neurons rats, but according to scientists, a similar mechanism is very likely in people. It is not clear why our brains have evolved this way. Perhaps it is with this mechanism, our brain is able to activate the needed faster than neurons. Ryan and his team hope their findings won't help only in understanding the action of the human brain, but also for the sick. To the example, the discovery may lead to the development of new therapies for some diseases such as Parkinson's disease. Gene therapy gel gives hope for rare treatment diseases of the skin. Scientists have managed to correct an extremely rare disease whose characteristic feature is that the skin even under the smallest with pressure, creates painful bladders. Bladder separation of the epidermis, because yes it is expertly called the disease, it was inhibited by gene therapy used on the skin with a gel. This work, as experts emphasize, is large a step forward in the growing field of research using therapies the genes. Bladder epidermis, Epidermolysis, Bulosa, 
is an inherited disease that causes the skin to be so sensitive that he can get to a little while he touched. Everyone and every one mechanical injury, pressure on the skin, even the one caused by clothing, makes that blisters appear on the skin, from which then form difficult the healing wounds. In the disease there are also discolorations, scarring, skin loss or teaspoons. Wounds also make patients susceptible to infections, and the disease itself promotes the development of skin cancers. In severe cases, wounds can cover most of the body. This makes everyday activities impossible. Although at least some mild forms of the disease may improve with age, there is no medications for severe cases that can eventually be fatal. There are several experimental treatments, for example therapy with stem cells. However, these have been effective in case only some of the patients. For this this invasive technique requires a transplant the skin that is expensive and necessary after it is hospitalization. But the scientists from Stanford University, they have now developed a cheaper and easier solution. Which can bring the desired relief to those affected by this disease. The results of the research were published in the journal Nature Medicine. In a study in a small group of patients, the researchers used the gel containing DNA to help repair the skin. This approach is just one of few new experimental gene therapies for this disease. But it is by far the simplest, gel filled with viruses carrying appropriate genes are spreading on the skin like an os. No need for any costly treatments or hospitalizations. The creators of the gel say it is the first topical gene therapy to undergo clinical trials and is probably the most effective such therapy developed so far. Nine people participated in the study, including three children. They all had the form of dystrophic disease, RDEB, which means that their cells don't have genetic instructions for protein called collagen 7. Normally, this collagen would bind several layers together skin, thus preventing the formation of painful blisters and wounds that they may remain unfaded for months or even years. Team led by dermatologist Peter Marinkovich from Stanford University School of Medicine has developed a virus containing gel herpes of the common one. Of course, the viruses have been modified so that they do not they could replicate and contain the gene collagen 7. One of the advantages of herpes viruses this is that their genome is sufficiently located for the large collagen gene 7. Another is that the virus has evolved to avoid responding the human immune system is the reason why the majority infection with the herpes virus does not go away, which is for the infected troublesome, but as a vector of gene therapy, it can be quite beneficial. Viruses in the gel have two intact copies of the gene O it's called COL7A1. Previous trials using this gene for transplants the skins proved safe and helped with wound healing, but engineering and the breeding of transplants was laborious and expensive. They also required administration anesthesia and weekly hospitalization to observe the progress of therapy. In contrast, the gel used in new research it was applied topically during short weekly outpatient visits, in which the dressings were changed. Gel Gel Herpes Herpes Virus The common does not integrate with the host genome when it infects the cell. There is a this is an advantage because there is a small risk that integration can disrupt normal expression of genes. For this gel is stable at temperature peaceful and can be applied without specialist knowledge during routine changes of dressings. Scientists treated two wounds on each patient by imposing every second or third day gel for one wound and placebo for the other. The therapy it lasted for 25 days. After three months, they assessed the condition of the wounds to determine how well they healed and then monitored them for the next few weeks to see if it has reopened. Most wounds treated with gene therapy gel closed it will be done within three months after the end of treatment. 
except for the wound on the foot that one of the participants had had for five years. In the end, it healed after the second treatment cycle and remained closed for eight months, in which the patient was monitored. Otherwise, a big, ten-year-old mourning covering most of the patient's body side healed during therapy about 70%. But the smaller wounds of this patient completely healed during the treatment. By comparison, wounds treated with placebo gel sometimes healed, but they opened again. Not every wound treated with new gel completely it healed, but the results are pretty good, Marinkovich said. The study is the first to show that the vectors of therapy genetic skin diseases can be effective when used topically. This is a also the first attempt at gene therapy in children with bladder separation the epidermis. The wounds heal quickly, but more importantly, they remain closed Dr. Marinkovic said. Therapy strengthens the skin and interrupts the painful and destructive cycle of opening and closing wounds experienced by patients the bladder separation of the epidermis, he added. Moreover. Samples of treated skin taken from seven subjects patients showed that she produced collagen 7 after 9 days after start of treatment. In at least one case, collagen expression 7 it lasted for almost 100 days. Participants in the study experienced several adverse events, but they were mild. We haven't seen any serious problems with multiple gel administration and patients and their families were very enthusiastic acting to the results, Marinkovic said. If the gel is allowed for clinical use by the Food and Drug Administration, we will be able to reach a much larger number of patients with this debilitating disease, he added. The viral vector does not penetrate deep into the skin so it cannot completely prevent blistering. And because collagen 7 is succumbing degradation, the treated skin cells finally exfoliate, the gel must be applied every once in a while. It's not a permanent cure, but it's a way, to really keep the wounds under control. Significantly improves quality of life patients, said Marinkovich.